Steve Moran with Senior Living Foresight, and I am talking today to Kevin McDonald, who is the executive director of... The Retreat at Easley. It is in Easley, South Carolina. Terrific. And I've also got here with me Serena Dura. And Serena, say hello and tell us who you are. I am the Senior Regional Director of Operations with Phoenix Senior Living. I saw this post on uh, uh, LinkedIn a few a uh, week or so ago about how, that Serena had put up about how one of her communities had reached 100% occupancy. And in a time where people are really, really struggling with occupancy, uh, I love to hear those stories and I thought there might be some lessons here. And so I reached out to Serena and we had a brief chat and after talking, it made the most sense to uh, actually uh, get Kevin on because there's really two amazing stories here. The first is how Kevin uh, came to be the executive director. And the second story is uh, about how you hit that occupants, that 100% occupancy. Trying to figure it out myself, but uh, I can tell you exactly what happened. Um, so I used to work in utility. I, I worked with AT&T for a while. I worked traveling around. Uh, I was always kind of hands in the dirt kind of guy. And so um, I was very frugal as well. So I would work on my own vehicles, paint my own house, you know, do all that kind of stuff, save a dollar or two. Not cheap, but frugal. <laughs> and so we were getting ready to have our first child. And I did not like what I was doing with AT&T. I had been there about six years. And so she looks over at me one day and says, hey, do you want to stay home with the kid? And so I said, sure, you know, I, I guess I kind of had some internal, you know, issues to deal with that because I'm, I'm the man I'm supposed to supply for my, you know, my family. And, um, but, it, but it worked. Um, I, I came home. Luckily, uh, she was she, she was making enough money so that we could survive and, and we were happy. And I stayed home with our first child. Uh, he turned a year old and then we had our second child. And they were both boys. And then he turned a year old. And then we had our third child. <laughs> and so we're, we're getting a little crazy here. And she's a girl. And so I'm like, you know what? I think it might be a good idea <laughs> if I go back to work <laughs> and you stay home with the kids. So I'm, I'm out here on my search. And um, I knew Serena from church. And she kind of knew that I was... Uh, kind of a jack of all trades kind of guy, you know, painting and, and plumbing and HVAC. And I could kind of do everything okay, nothing really good. Um, and so she she offered me a job and uh, I said, no. <laughs> and my wife looks at me and she says, it's Serena. You owe her. She's sweet. And I said, okay, I'll go. I'll go interview. So I ended up going to the quote unquote old folks home because that's what I thought it used to be you know uh, anytime I've ever been in uh, assisted living or nursing home or anything like that it was with my father when I was young and he would used to he used to go around and sing and so I didn't have great memories of those places and so I was a little reluctant to, to come in but uh, they needed a facilities director and so I, I came in there met with uh, Serena and Tony Edge and I got a really good feeling about it. And I said, well, you know what? I'll try it out. Um, and so they started me there. I started at the Pearl at East Side, and that's a memory care facility uh, dealing with people with dementia and Alzheimer's. And I just, it, it become my niche. Um, the residents there, every one of them had a story. Uh, some of them would remember you, some of them wouldn't. Um, but just dealing with them and helping them. Uh, you know, I may give one a candy bar or go get one, uh, a, a Coke from the store or something. And they would just appreciate it so much. And I'd never had that with any other line of work that I'd done. And I've done a lot. Of, I've, I've had a lot of jobs um, anywhere from bricklaying to, like I was saying, utilities um, and some sales jobs. But no one has ever appreciated me like my residents did there at the Pearl at East Side. And so I, I just loved it. And I excelled there. I, you know, I, I tried to do my best and, and treat every room like it, it wasn't mine, like it was better than mine. 
And if I was painting, you know, I'd try to do sharp lines. If I was changing light bulbs, I'd try to do it in a hurry. Just, you know, anything I did, I, I would try to kind of excel at it. Um, not because I was in competition for anybody with anyone, because I felt like they deserved it. Um, they, they lived a great life so far, and I wanted them to continue to live a great life while they were there. Uh, formed a lot of great relationships and, and probably had, by the time it was all said and done there, um, another 30 grandfathers and grandmothers, you know, to put under my belt. So yeah. it, it was a pretty awesome experience. Um, then Phoenix uh, left that, that building and another management company took over. Didn't necessarily have the same views. Uh, still did great for people. It was a, a still, still a great place to work. But I didn't, I didn't feel the compassion that I felt when Phoenix was there, and so uh, I kind of sought after Phoenix again. And I remember I was on a vacation in Myrtle Beach, and um, I did, had taken my laptop with me because I was checking every day. And the last day that we were we were supposed to leave um, uh, facilities, well, let me back up a little bit. So, all right, I was doing okay with facilities there. The executive director, Tony Edge, gave me an opportunity to go into the kitchen. So I become the food and beverage director for a, a period of time while I was also doing facilities work. Wow. Um, and I am not a cook, but I, I learned and it was fun. And uh, we had a good laugh about some of the stuff that I made. <laughs> but the residents loved me and they understood, you know. Um, but I, I did OK with that. And then I became the associate executive director there. And Tony gave me, Tony and uh, Serena gave me the opportunity to do that. And I decided to go back to school. I, I was a high school dropout. I had, you know, got my GED. Um, but I, I knew I had a few more classes before I could get my associate's degree because I know that you have to uh, have your degree to take the license test. And so I went back to school. I, um, I was doing the associate's. Um, program with I think it was a, a business administration and I would do that at night when I'd go home um, and it took me about a year year and a half to do it I think I first told uh, Serena that it would take me uh, one semester I think I lied and told her that and she said <laughs> okay kept pushing and pushing <laughs> but uh, I, I just had I used I was I went to school for criminal justice and then I just dropped out. And so I, I had some, I knew, but uh, we eventually got it there. Uh, and then, so Phoenix left uh, and I was still going to school. I didn't necessarily want to become an executive director for the company that I was working for, but I did see an opportunity to come back as a facilities director for Phoenix in Easley, the place where I reside. And so, um, so I did it. Uh, and I was, I was lucky and blessed enough to be able to come here to Easley and, I formed another group of grandmothers and grandfathers and, and I'm still with that, that same company where I know their, their heart and their desire is for our residents. Um, and so I worked with uh, Steve Eddy as my executive director here for a, a period of time and he resigned and uh, I was lucky enough to be able to apply for the, his position and I got it. Um, and in October, I, October of 2021, I, um, so it's been a year now. I've, I went and took my tests, and I, I passed all three of my tests, and uh, we've been kind of cruising since then. Cool. So um, let's talk, and I mean, I, I, I got to stop for just a minute and say, what I love about that story is your heart and your passion for the people who you're working with and your residents. And it just, it like, it, it, I'll, I'll bask in the glow of that passion all week long. And so it just, it really, really warms my heart. So, um, so you're at 100% occupancy, and that makes you very rare in the world of senior living today. So the first question I have for you is when you first became executive director, um, can you give me sort of a ballpark of where you started at and where you, how, how far you had to grow to get to 100%? Sure. We were about 36 residents. Um, out of? Out of uh, 50, 50 rooms. Okay. So you're just a little over 70%. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, 50 rooms, a uh, capacity of 56. Um, the numbers, though, weren't the real issue. The real issue was um, the the mindset, I guess, that this building had. Uh, they weren't a Phoenix property before, but I came on uh, shortly after Phoenix came in. So you had some people here um, who were really good at, at what they did, but um, not belonged in another line of work. Um, mm -hmm. you had some people who just needed to go to another industry and you had a 22 year old building that was kind of fallen in that had been, I won't say neglected, but it's, it had been through the ringer. And so, um, you know, you, you can, you can get 10, 15 residents in, but if, if your building's not right, and especially if your people aren't right, you're not going to retain those people. And so you have kind of have to have an atmosphere of enjoyment at work. You, I, I won't, I, I say it all the time to, to literally everybody I work with. I want to make an environment where we're proud to be here, where we, where we did get up without smashing the snooze button 20 times in the morning and where, and that's easier said than done. And I want to make it an environment where the residents that live here want to live here and they're proud to live here. I want to make it to where anybody, not just a facilities director or a housekeeper, if they see a cup laying around, they go and grab that cup because they wouldn't want a resident to view that as it being dirty or being left behind. Um, and so getting to that point, the numbers or that was, you know, that that comes easy. It's it's before that. It's whenever you have to tell people, I don't know if your heart's in this. Maybe we should help, you know, find you another place to work. And those difficult conversations where, you know, I want, I want people to have a heart here. And you really can't teach heart. You can teach how to do things, you know, how to paint a room. If you're not a painter, you can become a great painter. Uh, but if you're not a caregiver in your heart, you can't teach that, I don't think. And if there is a way, I want to find out because I would, <laughs> I would love to make people who aren't care, good, great caregivers but have a good work ethic great caregivers. I just don't, I don't, I don't think it's possible. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a little teaching with you before we're done because I don't think it's always possible, but I think sometimes it's possible. However, I'm mean, in saying that I think you're already doing it and you don't know it. All right. Well, okay. I'm always so, down to learn. I, I I learn every day here. Yeah. So so how, how so did you ever have any of these conversations with people where they sort of said, "Oh, I get it," and they actually turned it around, or did you pretty much just have to let them go? No, I've had many conversations with people. Um, it wasn't necessarily uh, like the no heart thing. If I, I tell you, I'll tell you a conversation where it, it didn't go great. Um, there was a young lady in here and I'd heard some issues, heard she had spoke to some residents, um, in, in a way that, that wasn't professional. I brought her in and the first question I said to her is, do you love your residents? And she said, some of them. And when I heard that, it broke my heart because you, you can't love some of them. Of course you have your, your ones that you call grandpa. Of course you have your ones that you call grandma, but they all deserve your love, no matter what, what they do to you. you. You can't be reactive to the situation. You have to treat every one of them with compassion, with love and respect. And if that's in your heart, you're not going to say some of your residents. And she found another, she found another place, fortunately for her. And I'm, I was happy to, to write her a letter and, and, and send her out the door. But I want people in this building to have that already. And if we if we can get that into people, I'm down to learn that lesson because uh, that was a really great person. She had a great work ethic, and I still would wish the best for her. Um, but I, I, I feel like I have some who um, kind of are are like that. But then I'll ask that question: Do you love your residents? Of course, I love them. Well, well, then I go into the training part. Well, we can't be reactive to our residents. We have to. We have to make sure we treat them with with love and compassion, and you know. And so we've I've I've had great conversations like that, and I've had some that have taken a turn for the worse, unfortunately. Um, but that's the that's the weeds, you know. That 
that's the hard part of, of doing this every day is that I'm, I work with 32, 33 individuals who maybe have an issue outside of work that where it's, it's not necessarily that they don't want to come to work and, and work hard, but you, you never know what, what happened in their personal life. And, and that goes for the residents too. You have 50, 51 residents who some of them are going to have a bad day sometimes. So, and, and just like, I don't want my staff to be reactive. I don't want to be reactive when I hear a situation. And so I, I like to talk it out with every one of them, every one of my. So I love all that. I, I teach a bunch of uh, fifth and sixth grade kids at my church every week. And you know what? I love every one of them, but some of them are more difficult than the other. Although I tend to love the ones that are more difficult more than I love the ones who are, who are, who are easier to tell you the truth. And so I, I, it's exactly, it's exactly the same thing. You know, I've got, I've got three boys who I call my three troublemakers and uh, you know, we laugh about it and we challenge it and we talk about it. And um I, I, when I first started doing this probably five years ago, I normally end up with about, I don't know, four or five fairly small, you know, actually not in you know, sort of medium sized church and, you know, but a small group of kids, parents weren't really committed and, you know, everybody's, wow, well, the parents won't bring their kids. And I said, you know, I think I can probably work on that. And so now I have about 20 kids that show up on time and, and, you know, you just treat them like, so I'm going to talk to you. I want to talk. To you. So I'm going to actually want to ask you a work question. And then I'm going to some come back and see if I can. I, so you've already confirmed to me. I think you're largely doing the thing that makes people better, but how long did it take you um, to get to a hundred percent? And did you do anything special with marketing or was it just changing the environment? I think it was about a year uh, and no, uh, the marketing, t we, we really didn't run any kind of incentives or anything. I think it was like, it all goes back to that environment of the building because you can, you can, the marketer can get people in, you know, they're going to come knocking on the door. You're going to have tours show up. Um, but if your staff aren't running to them and smiling and giving them hugs and saying, Oh, I can't wait for you to get in here. You know, um, if, if, you, if that doesn't happen at here and it happens down the road at another place, they're going down the road. And so um, it, it was a combination of really everything, uh, a combination of caring about the place, of, of caring about the residents. And it, it, it starts with the landscaping and goes to the carpet and the interior of the building. But every time that we do have a tour, I tell families, please go look at other places. And they're going to have this same floor and these same walls. Um, they're going to have the landscaping. They're going to have everything that we have. Nothing is going to be different, but the people are going to be different. So you need to speak to the people, the individuals. Are the staff happy? Do they have staffing issues? Uh, that's that's one uh, really. I mean, we are so blessed to not be able to not have any staffing issues right now when everyone else literally does, but we like a good relaxed atmosphere. We hold our staff accountable, but just like I want them to care about our residents, they know I care about them too. They know I want them to be successful. I want every one of them to be able to run this building if I'm not here. And so we, tr we try not to hold anybody back here. And that's what really creates that, that number, that hundred percent is, is building it from the ground up. I tell people, if you worry about the numbers, that, that's backwards thinking. It's gonna be care first, and then if you take care of people, your numbers are automatically gonna reflect that. Yeah. And it works. Yeah. So I think that you are, so I'm gonna give you a proposition. I think you've got a lot of people who are working great for you that love coming to work every day. And if they had a different they were a different leader, they wouldn't feel the same way. So I think that you actually, I mean, there's no doubt about it. There, there are people um, who go to work for organizations and they just don't care. And there's nothing you can do to make them care. But I think there are lots of people who are in the middle who will care if their boss cares, who will care 
if they see they're making a difference in the world and that's your job as a leader to to help them see that you're making they're making a difference in the world and to know that you care and so i think i think i, I actually don't think i can teach you anything because you're doing all the things i was going to talk about what you're doing i think that the only thing i would say to you is you need to give yourself more credit because i think you're actually taking very ordinary people and making them into extraordinary people because you are helping them to see the possibilities of what they can do to make the world a better place. And so I just absolutely applaud you for doing that. So um, I appreciate that. I, I think that it's, it, it may be a combination of that, but definitely uh, depending on God, he puts people in people's lives. For a reason. And I, I, I feel like I am here for, for a reason. And my team that supports me and, and that I support, um, I feel like he, he has sent them to me. Um, so, you know, I, that's, that's really the only way to put it is, is giving God the credit for that because we get to do such an important thing here. It's not like any other job. It's, it's not like, you know, slinging hamburgers and those jobs are great. Those jobs are wonderful. I'm glad every day at lunchtime, there's somebody there to give me a hamburger. Yeah. yeah. The job comes with so much responsibility. It's so important. And that that's why I was saying that if, if, if you don't care enough, then please go somewhere. I, I, I want you to be successful in something that you do. And, yeah. <laughs> and, and so um, we just want to, we just want to love on our people and, I, I assume that the numbers will be okay once we, you know, if, if we're doing that. And if they're not, then, hey, we get, we still get to love on our people. We yeah. get a fuss out a little bit, but, you know, we still get to yeah. do that. So Yeah, you know what? I, I actually, I'm with you. I think that, that in virtually any marketplace, if you love on your people um, and you pass that down to your staff and they love on their people, I, I think occupancy virtually always takes care of itself. And, you know, I think the, the, the marketing and sales are important, but I think getting, getting that culture piece is probably the best thing you can do to help with your marketing, uh, for sure. So, um, oh, yeah. um, when they see a bus pull up at Walmart and matter of fact, I, I was just at Walmart today with one of my residents. Um, and I went in to get, he had a hole in his shoe. And so I pushed him in there, you know, they see that people see that this yeah. is a small town. Uh, I didn't do it to be seen. I didn't do it for any kind of marketing, you know, secret trick or anything like that. I did it because they needed some shoes. And then I spoke to several people while I, were, while I was in Walmart, you know, of, about what we do. And, and, and my that was with me. Um, but, you know, when you're doing things like that, not only does your, do your employees see that, but the community sees it as well. Yeah. And so you're, you're exactly right. It, it does kind of take care of itself whenever you take yeah. care of your people. You have to be the best salesperson. I can uh, tell. I, I'd meet you. <laughs> I'd want to move in. And um, I, I, did a, I did a tour of a Sunrise building many, many years ago in my neighborhood. I showed up. I was writing an article a week about just going in and touring buildings. I didn't get it done. I needed to have it published on Monday. I was Sunday afternoon. So I walked into this. Uh, sunrise building and the manager on duty was a I don't know even if she was the head of, of facilities or just somebody who was a worker there and her English was terrible I mean she was and I'll tell you what I walked out of that building and I said I wanted to move in because she just loved on every I mean it took us forever to do the tour right because she was stopping and hugging and having these conversations and she was the best even though she's not a marketer at all, she was the best salesperson I have ever seen in senior living because awesome. she cared and I saw it. So um, when, it's, when it's real, you know it. Kevin, thank you very much. Serena, thank you for setting this up. This has been, you, you made my whole, you made my whole week.